Permissive hypotension. Ah, what should yes. be our goal, our goal blood pressure in the hemorrhagic shock trauma patient? You know, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to tell you that probably the, the, what we, if it's a mentating patient, and oftentimes it is, someone that comes in mentating, I'm going to go with someone that's alert and talking to you, someone that's... Pressure like, 70 yep. and alert and talking yep. is cool? I'd be okay with that. Um, I'm going to yeah. hit the wood <laughs> on and, that. And can I qualify that, you know, in the Bickle study that, that everybody's seen, you know, they really did not shoot for a target pressure because we want to, because we're in the hospital, we've got to monitor, there's a cuff on or an A-line in, and we want, we want to know that it's safe to keep him at 90 or 80 or 70 or whatever, but in that Bickle study, they didn't shoot for that. They went with fluids or no fluids in hypotensive patients, and they didn't try to target a 90. And I think as everybody knows, whether you're using a non-invasive cuff or an invasive um, blood pressuring, targeting exactly to 90 or, or whatever is very difficult. And so uh, I think that practically, what do we do? Because this is a situation that we encounter all the time. Um, if the patient's awake and talking to us, and we already know it's hypotensive, and it was all penetrating patients in the Bickle study. They're going to the operating room. We're happy if they're talking and mentating. If not, though, artificially. They're, they're so yeah. often intubating. <laughs> or yeah. they're artificially yeah. And, yeah. and totally arbitrarily. I'm going to say we try to do 90-ish. And, but I think the big take-home message would be we don't need a normal blood pressure and we don't need to, okay, everybody hold tight, don't That's go to the operating room. That's a systolic of 90, systolic, not a map yeah, of 90, exactly. systolic of 90. Exactly, and I think the take-home should be that we're going to rush to the operating room to get the source stopped and we're not waiting to try to jam in as much blood as possible to get him to 120. So. so the idea is that you don't want a higher pressure because you don't want a higher pressure head causing increased exsanguination. Let me ask you this, because uh, I'm not in the OR, and I, I watched you pulling the stomach yeah. out of somebody's yeah. chest, and they were, I, was, I kept thinking, I was like, yeah. he's going to break it. He's going to break it. He's going to break that yeah. poor guy. In the OR, when yeah. you see patients and they get to 100 and 110 systolic, mm -hmm. do you see more bleeding? Uh, no. I mean, pr practically, like in all honesty, if they're yeah. very hypotensive, like, so, you know, right. like this super, isn't like recorded yeah, or anything. Exactly. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> like, is there a camera? <laughs> yeah, no, um, but we, if they're really hypotensive, that's something that when the pressure normalizes into that 90, 100, 110, we definitely, you do notice it. And, you know, but it's, it's, that's also a twofold thing because not only is the pressure head increasing, but as time goes on, <coughs> even if they're recovering, they're becoming much more coagulopathic and everything right. starts rising. Right. So right. I think what we're seeing is actually a combination of those. But at least anecdotally, yeah, when they're super hypotensive versus when they're more normotensive, way more bleeding. So based on no evidence, okay. your clinical yep. experience and yep. just your gestalt, yep. 90, yep. systolic 90 is your goal. Mm -hmm. But if it's an awake and alert patient, whatever keeps them yep. mentating. Perfect. I would agree with that. Not that these right. patients are ever intoxicated. Yeah. <laughs> Never. Absolutely not. <laughs>